Good afternoon, everyone, um, and quite an opening from Rob there. Um, Mike and I want to walk you through today how uh, Magento can save your brand. Uh, a little bit about us. My name is Kevin Castingway. I uh, work for Acme United Corporation for the last four years where I have led the digital sales and marketing team. Uh, previously before that, I was with uh, Danaher Corporation, which is a large industrial and scientific company. And, and Mike? Uh, I'm Mike Healy. I'm the uh, president of Yeoman Technologies. We've, uh, we work specifically with brands. Uh, we're really not necessarily a classic e-commerce type of player. We focus on the traditional channels and particularly for manufacturers, we work with them on how to make the balance of kind of selling direct as well as keeping your channels happy. And we've been working with Acme for about nine years. Great. So just a little bit about Acme United Corporation. Um, Acme is a 150 year old company. Uh, we are public. Uh, last year we were lucky enough to ring the closing bell on Wall Street. Um, we're based in Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, while you may not know who Acme United Corporation is, you might be familiar with some of our brands. For example, on your desk you might have some Westcott scissors or a paper trimmer or a pencil sharpener. Uh, as we walked in the building this morning, uh, one of our first aid kits is on the wall. Um, we have uh, brands like Camillus, if you're a hunter, 150-year-old knife brand. Uh, we have brands like Cuda, if you're a fisherman. So we are very much retail-centric, and we've got about eight brands currently under our portfolio. So as a 150-year-old company, um, retail has been our friend and uh, we've been very successful in the retail space, but as we're gonna go through, and as you all probably know, the retail landscape has really changed. So the next 150 years are going to be much more of a challenge for our brands. And Kevin, before you go, everybody always asks, is it Acme from the Roadrunner? It is not. It is. <laughs> so that's if you look up on Wikipedia, so the, the Acme was created by the Warner Brothers Film Company, and at the time, Acme, who still makes scissors, made scissors specifically for cutting film. There was another Acme that also made lights for lighting the film, so officially the lighting company got credit for it, but right now there's, it's still a debate. Acme was on the floor of Warner Brothers back then, so yeah. we're sticking with it. So we've been, all, yeah, we've been around a long time, a lot of history. So um, the core challenges for a traditional brand, if we have any brand manufacturers in the room, is we all know what's going on in the retail environment, right? Stores are closing. Uh, faster than anyone could have imagined. Um, and the purchase obviously have purchased and moved online. And that's both in the uh, B2C space, but also the B2B space. And our first aid business uh, plays primarily in the B2B space with industrial manufacturers. Um, and obviously the online space is incredibly challenged as well. Uh, we've got a lot of private label brands out there. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, Chinese and Asian knockoff suppliers. So not only is our landscape sh uh, shifted, but it's a more competitive and, and tougher environment. Yeah, and I think one of the things that makes Acme different with our eight Magento sites is a lot of people here, they talk about the close rate, the sale, what's my revenue track. Overlaying everything we do is that balance where our websites have to be able to complement our retail partners. And that's everyone from, from the big players like Walmart and Amazon, the small mom and pop. So when we started this idea to try to get a better digital footprint, e-commerce revenue is a part of it, but at the same time, you cannot be a company, a couple hundred million dollars in sales, and look at your traditional channel and say, well, they're gone and we're gonna try burn bridges. Yeah. So I think that's really the, the, the piece that all of us struggle with today is how do, you, how do you fit that balance, right? With that traditional retail channel, how do you not disrupt that channel, but at the same standpoint, how do you continue to grow your business? How do you grow your direct business? How do you grow on your websites with your retail partners? How do you grow with all these emerging and pureplay.com partners? So that's the piece where the balance here, our brands on the left um, and our partners on the right, um, where most brand manufacturers just haven't adapted and haven't really figured that out. And I think what we're here to talk about today is really what Acme has done over the last four years to adapt and then more importantly, how that's had an impact to our business. So back when I first started and I started working with Mike um, and the team was really figuring out what the right platform was to use. We had websites um, on multiple different platforms. 
we had grown through acquisition, so we had got, uh, we had received uh, many websites on other platforms that just didn't have the functionality that we needed. And making the right decision on the right platform was really critical for us. So four years ago, really looking at this, we're saying, how do we get eight websites built and managed and, and working to do the things we need to do to support all of those sales goals? And the solution has been Magento. Yeah, and to tie it up, tie it in a, expand a little further, when you think about eight sites, in addition to the eight sites, and Barbara's here, we have to create digital content for three, 400 retail partners. So for those of you who sell direct, but also sell on Amazon, and you find out, how do I get my content up? Whatever we create has to be something that we can pass up to those partners. All have different systems, all have different routines. We're not the seller, it's on Walmart, it's on Sears, it's on Staples. So when you look at the site, we had this core challenge where literally for those who've ever worked in a brand company, there's a team that just does these weird Excel spreadsheets. And we say, we gotta be able to get to a path. And you know, quite frankly, when the, the platform started, we were on a platform called Shopatron. And so Shopatron is now owned by Kibu, and their original plan was we get the brand challenge. You could actually tie your retailers and your retailers could do fulfillment. They kind of backed away from that. Uh, the CUDA brand was on Amazon Web Store. Uh, for those of you who remember, Amazon Web Store went away about five, six years ago. Again, that promise was, if you get your content on the Amazon Web Platform, it's your own website, and that content then automatically flows into Amazon, cutting off that additional layer of work. And Amazon essentially walked away from that. So we kind of, we had, a, there was a bunch of bumps and bruises. And so when it came time about five, six years ago to start looking at a platform, that's where Magento started to rise to the top. Yep. So why Magento? Um, Magento has really given us the ability to grow our online business across all of our channels. Uh, first and foremost, we've been able to grow our direct website sales, which hadn't necessarily been um, a core initiative for the organization. Really our brands were to, to present our products, but really support our retail partners first and foremost. So as Mike mentioned, we were able to build eight, eight we currently have eight websites, and we have an award-winning app on our, um, on our platform, and we have content for over 5,000 individual SKUs on those products. Um, the system also connects very nicely into our ERP system, so that the orders that do come in, they, they never touch anyone's hands, it goes right into our ERP system and our fulfillment house. Um, once again, it, it, it supports our app development, so we're able to pull product over, information over um, onto the, uh, the app for our first aid business. And then also we've been able to expand into international shipping with a simple plug-in. In supporting our retail partners, um, you know, all the retail partners that are out there, especially the brick and mortars, they've got to compete with Amazon on content. And that's an area where brand manufacturers have just really fallen short. They don't necessarily have uh, the manpower to uh, put as good content on those websites. But with the Magento platform and having that all centralized, we're able to uh, connect to our content management platform, which we use Shot Farm. And Shot Farm allows us to syndicate all of that content. So no more spreadsheets, no more um, filling out uh, information manually. It's just all syndicated over. Um, also, we have a relationship with uh, Bizarre Voice for our ratings and reviews. So all of our ratings and reviews come into our site and our questions and answers. Those we can syndicate over to partners. So really what our initiative is on our website is we want to be everything to everyone everywhere. So your, your experience on uh, a brand website, on Amazon, on Walmart.com, on Staples.com, whatever it is, is a perfect experience. And you have that best in class content. And that's really hard to do unless you have the right tools in place. And then also, obviously, we want to continue to support our retail partners with where to buy links. And we use a company called Hatch to do that as well, where we actually can link over to our partners' websites um, direct from a product page as well. So it's really giving that customer a great experience, whether they want to buy on our site, want to buy on our partner's site, but most importantly, we really have good control uh, of our content. So maybe show the picture of the stack. So, so when you look at the, the site, and you know, so these are the eight brand sites, and you know, Kevin mentioned that e-commerce is part of it. The way Acme runs is each brand has some very different selling channels where 
Camillus is very much a, a specialty retail knife. Um, First Aid only is a B2B site. Westcott's more along the consumer side. Each has different pricing strategies. Acme, the best way to think of it is people say, oh, so you're really a house of brands. Each team has its own strategy, their own pricing program, their own marketing systems, their own structures. And so part of that wrangling of these different things is we wanted to be able to put them into that same central thing. And then Kevin mentioned the pieces that you don't see on a whole lot of sites. A lot of people think, oh, well, we use Channel Advisor for Amazon and things like that. Amazon grew almost separately from our web initiative, and that's actually a big part of our business. But that content is really kind of treated off. We took the rest of the channels, and Channel Advisor brings us orders and access to markets. Bizarre Voice, for those of you who use Bizarre Voice, you think about it as reviews for your own site. How we use it is we use it because we are the brand and manufacturer. We do sampling programs. So we take Camillus knives or Cuda knives, we do a sampling program, they're up on our site, they're validated by Bizarre Voice. Then our retail partners, when they put our SKUs up, if they're Bizarre Voice customers, they get those reviews. So for a manufacturer, it's a game changer because now instead of the, they're, they're authenticated, the customers trust us, the retail partners love the concept, they've already chosen the platform and we've made the investment here that it's here and we're able to leverage it for our site, extending our position, and then push that out so that our partners get a new product, and depending on the sampling program, that product comes out of the gates flying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it says, Kevin mentioned Shot Farm. Shot Farm, there's a lot of products, Salsify and some of the others. We had to pick something. And so there's some, some product information systems upstairs and stuff, but one of the challenges of a, you know, a mid-sized company, there's not a thousand people. There's not 500 people that are gonna handle the products here. Each individual brand owns their products, and the job of the digital team is to wrangle that and get them in place. And so Magento really gave us that flexibility there. And then the other reason that we like Magento, and Kevin mentioned we have an app. So on the B2B side of things, we have a, we have a first date only app. So if you go to your cabinets and your first date only apps, our partners, our distribution partners, private label this app. They put it out there, and you might see it, it could be a Fastenal app, it could be a Granger app. It is skinned with their content. It is our system, and that information flows back into Magento, not for transactions, but for requisition management, for getting themselves up and running. And when you think of a relatively sleepy industry like first aid cabinets, it's been a game changer, because now it's, I like your cabinets, I might start using the app, but nobody else has it. And so when you think about that flexibility in Magento, because it has the ability to be a transaction but not be a transaction, it really became this extra point for us to be able to build it out and roll it out. So we went very high level on some of the things that we've done, basically how we've approached the retail space, the e-commerce space, selling on our own website, balancing that out, the partners, the tools, uh, how that all works into Magento. So as we look at, if we could have turned the calendar back four years now and said, what are the things we think we really need to know if this is something we want to do well? Um, the first one is good base content and product information is required. If you don't have good bullet points, good images, more importantly, product specifications uh, that are typically in your ERP system, this is gonna be a struggle because you can only syndicate what you have. So a lot of that starts with just good base content and having that uh, in place. Um, the second one is really having a good IT system. Uh, Bill Dosman, who's our CIO, is fantastic. While these systems are meant to work together, that doesn't necessarily mean it's that easy. Um, and there's always complexities with plugging in different systems. So really having your IT team on board is, uh, is huge. Um, obviously management support is critical. If they don't understand the vision, see the vision of where you're going, then it's gonna to be tough to get resources and funding. Um, on the order management side, specifically with our pure e-commerce partners, um, we, you really have to micromanage orders that come in. Um, fulfillment, or as you know, with Amazon, with eBay, with any e-commerce partner, 
uh, your, your, your score is going to be pretty low in terms of being a good vendor. So you got to make sure that those orders get into your system, your warehouse gets everything out. It should flow smoothly, but once again, you've got to keep a really close eye on it. And then obviously, uh, picking the right platform that can support everything that you need. And, and that's why we're such big proponents of, of Magento, and that's why it's worked so well. So that's kind of my take from a business standpoint. Mike, from yeah, and, and just And we kind of skipped over quickly the slide where we showed you the eight sides, the app, the shot farm, the bizarre voice, the channel advisor. Zero existed four years ago. So when you look at that commitment to, to step up and create the ability to feed that data out, to get richer content, to invest in the assets, I think one of the things that when we were asked to help out is you've got to close the gaps between IT and marketing. And they have to work together. Who owns the website? It's an old question. In the case of Acme, sales cannot own the website because it's not about the sale. Marketing cannot own the website because sometimes it is about the sale. Technology, the IT team can't own the website because there's content they've got to be. And so that's when you think about the bumps and challenges, particularly when you added this much technology stack in a fairly short time period, you've got to close that. And so Bill came on board uh, as the CIO, I think, two or three years ago. Uh, and then obviously we have a great partner in V Group uh, that's done some of the development. I think that's the key. I think the other part, particularly when you're migrating some sites, and some of these sites have been on different platforms for decades, you gotta close this gap because you gotta love your 301s. You've gotta love the history that's out there on the web. And so Acme is, and we've heard this from thousands of times when people talk about cutovers, and they always say, well, there's always gonna be potentially an organic drop. It's a lie. If you do your job, and all that painful homework, and you go to a better platform like Magento, it does not go down. It goes up. And it is the most, and Kevin just done about it, it is the sloggiest, most boring work out there because you're wondering if it's relevant that a site from the 90s works, it's there. I think the other three pieces are really about the internal groups. Um, we are big fans of analytics. Share the analytics, even if it's bad. Make sure everybody sees it all the way up because if they don't get the concept they'll fall into the IT trap that's not about e-commerce the IT trap about e-commerce is they always talk about oh we did this project years ago to upgrade X and it didn't work or we did the phone system and Y and it didn't work and we did that you have to break that the culture has to become we can do this and we will continually invest and I think that's where you have to be able to do that and then your team when you think about Acme's team growing fairly rapidly, eight sites is a pretty massive amount of cutovers. The systems are pretty massive. Getting them outside to see other sites. Getting them to hear horror stories about other things. To look at, frankly, all the time, other platforms. This is a Magento conference. Always look at other platforms. Why? It makes you think, it makes you look at it, and it makes you reaffirm. And that's where you really have to, when you think about your team, becoming digital, it's not being technical digital, it's just being cleaner. So, we talked a lot about a lot of stuff, and you're probably all thinking, well, what does this mean? I mean, has it worked for you? It sounds like it's been pretty good. You know, here's, here's a slide that I think proves it, once again. The money slide. The money slide, we're, we're a public corporation. Um, so back in, you look back 10 years, um, our business was really uh, supported by the Westcott uh, brand uh, for the office space was about 60% of our business at the time. E-commerce was less than 1% of what we did and we were about a $60 million company. Uh, 10 years later, we're a $140 million company and our e-commerce sales are 11%. So, and, uh, and hidden in that 11%, when you think about what percentage of the office retailers are now e-commerce, that's 10 to 15 percent. What percentage of the mass market is now e-commerce? That's more like 30 percent. The industrial and sporting goods is a little lower, so when you look at the blend, we've been able to take a direct portion of that business and expand it at the same time as making sure that our retail partners, even though they're shifting and changing, we provided them the content. So it's one of those great ones where you look, so you say, yeah, it's 11 percent officially, but if you actually dug into the details, you'd probably see it go from 1% to probably almost 30%, which is typically where the products in our market are today.
Yeah, and clearly that's what we need to do to survive as a brand manufacturer. Um, and obviously Mike's team's been an incredible help um, to, to make this happen. So as we look forward, uh, what's next? It's 2.0. We, we got to get onto the Magento platforms, uh, 2.0 version. Uh, once again, we've got to migrate eight websites and an app and another app in development over. So this is going to be uh, a primary objective for the just, business. Just a quick, how many people are already on 2.0? And how many people aren't? We love you. When we, back when we looked hard five years ago, when you're thinking about that level of change and that level of stability that you needed, plus the things we were going to plug in, 2.0 was out, but it wasn't an option. When you go back to managing up, mm -hmm. internally, everybody knows it. Everybody knows that was the right decision. I can tell you, we never would have been able to do the things that were out there now, because some of the stuff hadn't been written for 3.2.0, plus the structure. Yeah. So I think that's that, that, that DNA that has to be labeled. Yep, the platform's changed. Yep, we're going to wait. We're going to ride it out as long as we can, and then we make the leap. Yeah. But it's a leap. So it's a large capital expense, obviously, for us, and a large uh, time requirement for the group. But trying to stay to the positives, obviously, we know there's, there's great benefits of moving to 2.0, and, and, and we have to. So, uh, you know, things with conversion, things with checkout, things with staging environments, you know, those are things I'm really excited about that will hopefully drive uh, significant revenue uh, going forward. So, any questions for myself or Mike? Yep, back. They do. Uh, most large retailers are, are part of Bizarre Voice. Obviously, Amazon uses a closed system. Um, and they do a really nice job in terms of syndicating reviews over. Um, sometimes you might have to do a little bit of manual intervention, but it really works great. And it's really changed our relationship with the retailers because it really, there's no incremental. Uh, there's not a lot of incremental cost for us to send it to two versus three retailers. And with the sampling program, as Mike mentioned before, that is a real game changer. And, and from what I've seen, and we're in a lot of different industries against a lot of different competitors, our competitors aren't doing it. And we have a different conversation with yeah, them. And one of the things about the review program, we own the reviews. So we do have a retailer that's not using uh, Bizarre Voice, and they are allowed to use the reviews. And so because it's our sampling program, they're able to scrape our site and basically use those for themselves. So obviously it benefits the Bizarre Voice customer that, that uses it, but if it's someone that's on Power Reviews or something and says, hey, I want to be able to use these validated reviews, we're allowed to let them do that. And we have one that definitely has done it. Yeah. Did you have a question? Absolutely. You know, as Mike mentioned, all of our brands have different strategies. We're a fairly decentralized company, um, and some brands have, like Westcott is, is in a leadership position, um, and then other brands, we are in a position where there's just three or four big monsters out there, and we have to compete. So it, that is, becomes a huge challenge for us, um, just each brand kind of having their own strategy and, and, and really understanding where they fit in the market and then seeing what our, our competitors are doing from a digital standpoint. Yeah, and I think one of the things why the app became a concept is because there was so much watching of the competitors and what they're doing and there was this kind of a core, make it easy to reorder the supplies, make it easy to reorder, and it was all about the web side. When the field staff was out talking to our partners, and the partners are like, nobody sits at a laptop and orders supplies. They're right in front of the device. And so that kind of became the genesis of them, us watching what the competitors do and then realizing, with, particularly with our partners, they came back and said, no, no, you have to make it easy. It's Kevin's dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to get to work. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, part of, you know, one of the exciting things about kind of moving to this next iteration with the platform is taking and again, the concept of the app and some of the other things and saying, boy, we can bring a lot of stuff forward. Uh, and, I, and I think that the, not only the industrial side, but I think some of the sporting sides has some real good potential there. Yeah. Anyone else? If not, thank you everyone for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.